Okay, so magandang hapon sa inyong lahat and uh, welcome sa isa sa mga last lectures. Today, we will be talking about the Philippine constitutions. No? And to the outline given to us by the Commission on Higher Education and is also adopted by the University of Santo Tomas, uh, we will be talking about 1899, 1935, 1973 and 1987 constitutions albeit despite the fact that there are more than that no there are more than five constitutions in the philippines so i am uh, quite sure that you are familiar with the word constitution and i am quite sure na kahit hindi ito household name um Somehow, somewhere, you've heard about it from the news, from your classes, from your readings, from the social media, you've heard about the word constitution or even in your organization. No, yung, uh, for example, you have a, an organization and it has a constitution and bylaws. So I am sure you are uh, familiar with this or at least um, uh, acquainted with this. And um, palakihin lang natin ng konti mula sa constitution and bylaws of your organizations. Palakihin natin ng konti, it's the constitution of the whole country. So same principle applies with your organization, and um, but this is much, much bigger. Constitution is, is a rule, is a law, no? pero this is a very different law. Very different in the sense na it, it is actually the beginning of a country, for example. We always start with a constitution and without it, there may be chaos. What makes it different from other laws? It's because it is the number one law, the law among laws, the, the highest law. No? That whatever law coming out na against it, or not in consonance with it becomes invalid the law that is new and um, not in harmony with it shall be declared unconstitutional and it therefore walang ko, walang effect no wala siyang value wala siyang force and effect so constitution is actually a body of doctrines and practices that form the fundamental organizing principle of a political state Constitution is described as the fundamental law of the state. No? So, um, to explain it, a constitution is a, is, is a document, it's a body of doctrines, no? principles, na the people and the state agree. The people and the government agree together na ito ang magiging principles of governance ng ating bansa. It's actually a list of rights for the people. It's actually a list of powers for the government. It's actually a list of limitations to the power of the government. It's actually a list of the limitations of the rights of the people. So para siyang contract between the government and the people. That document is like a contract, no? The people would be governed, pero gusto nila na may assurance sila. And so they list down all the assurances that they wanted. And then the government would govern, pero may limitation siya. Ang limitation niya ay nakalista sa constitution. No? So walang, walang uh, abuses, walang, walang uh, parang dihado ng mga tao. Walang abuso mula sa government. Everybody lives peacefully together because we have a document. We have a body of principles that we listed down even, e even before the republic started. So this is the contract. The contracts among all contracts in the government. So a constitution is a body of rules governing the affairs of an organized group. And then every state has a constitution. No? Bawat bansa may constitution. Yung ibang bansa, 
hindi nakasulat ang kanyang constitution, no? Uh, unwritten. Pero meron pa rin, no? Common law ang tawag nila, common law rules and regulations, common law constitution kapag unwritten. Pero sa Philippines, written. Pinag-usapan, pinagdebatihan, no? Inaprubahan, no? And then we put it in a document. The document protects us, no? We are very zealous in protecting this document, no? Minsan gustong i-amendahan ito ni na Pangulong Fidel V. Ramos, nag talaga yung mga tao. Minsan gusto itong amyendahan ng magpapasaring na na mag a na yung mga Pangulo kasi gusto nilang palawigin yung term nila no? na lampas doon sa nakatakda sa saligang batas or constitution. nag agad ang mga tao. So we keep the provisions of this constitution zealously. And we don't want people to change it because we already approved this. We want this. We want this implemented. No? So, yan. No? Ayan. So, implicit in the concept of a constitution is the idea of a higher law that takes precedence over all other laws. So, this is the, this is the highest of all the law. And yan siya ang idea. No? Siya ang pinakamataas sa lahat ng laws. Um, Dati-dati, pag gumawa ka ng law, uh, ito yung law mo, ito yung subsequent law, ito i-repeal niya ito. No? Ang old law, may bagong law, ang bagong law, i-repeal niya yung old law. Pero sa constitution, hindi siya ma-repeal ng mga laws. No? Kung may mga laws na against sa constitution, unconstitutional yan. No? So kakaiba yung law ito, higher law siya. Higher law yung dating niya. Okay, so as an idea, as a, para mabigyan kayo ng overview, we have framed seven constitutions already in our history. So the constitution of Biyak na Bato in 1897, the constitution of the Malolos Republic, 1899, the 1935 constitution of the Philippines, the Constitution of the Second Philippine Republic, 1943. The 1973 Constitution. The Freedom Constitution of 1986. And the 1987 Constitution. So the Constitution is the highest law of the land. We framed it. People involved themselves in making it. So people are involved in preserving it. So, Filipinos allowed themselves to be governed, but only after a constitution is in place. So, we need to understand now we are a state. We need to know uh, the state. So, sa side natin, you'll see the Philippine map. No? And that's the Philippines. No? It's a very familiar picture to us because it looks like a dog lying lying on its side, no? Yung kanyang legs ay uh, Sulu Archipelago and part of Zamboanga Peninsula and then yung kanyang arms, yung Palawan Archipelago, no? That is the home, our home. So we we ought to protect this home. We ho we ought to love this home, no? Ayan. So that is the Republic of the Philippines. And the Republic of the Philippines is a state. It is a state. So we have to define what a state is. Now, one of the definitions of a state is that a state is a complete body of free persons united together for the common benefit to enjoy peaceably what is their own and to do justice to others. So it is a complete body of persons, you and me. Okay, another definition, this is so far the best definition of the word state according to the political science world or among the political scientists. This is the, the most common and the most accepted definition of the state. A state is a community of persons, more or less numerous, 
permanently occupying a definite portion of the territory independent of external control and possessing an organized government to which a great body of inhabitants render habitual obedience. No, it is a, a definition by James Wilford Garner. If you look at the definition, we can dissect it into elements, the elements of the state. So the first element of the state is it is a community of persons more or less numerous. And then permanently occupying a definite portion of the territory. So there must be a territory. No? And uh, napakita ko kanina yung map. I'm so emotional when I see the map because that is our territory. No? Sometimes some people forget that. Number three, independent of external control. That is independence or sovereignty. No, no other country can dictate what we should do in our country. We are independent. No, uh, our country, together with any other country, we are at at the level of them. We are equal to them, and they cannot interfere with our internal affairs because we are a sovereign nation, and that is a settled principle. Nobody can question that. That is non-negotiable. Uh, we are free to determine the direction of our development, of our progress, of our future. Uh, and last element, an organized government no? and possessing an organized government, which a great body of inhabitants render habitual obedience. So government, no? to summarize yung, yung definition ng state kanina, four elements. Territory, government, citizens, sovereignty. Uh, going back, our focus will be the 1899 Constitution, the 1935 Constitution, the 1973 Constitution, and the 1987 Constitution. Pero since mahahaba ito, no? uh, yung, alibawa, yung 1987 Constitution, that's the longest constitution almost one of the longest constitution in the world. No? So medyo mahaba siyang aralin. So para madali siyang maaral, madali siyang mahimay, focus muna tayo doon sa um, framework of analysis muna natin, yung elements of the state. Yung kanina, territory, government, citizens, sovereignty. Yun ang ating gagamitin framework para mahimay-himay natin itong 1, 2, 3, 4 constitutions na ito. Hmm. Siyempre may konteksto, bago natin puntahan ang constitution na yan, 1899 for example, eh, kailangan muna natin i-discuss ng konti ang uh, context. No? Kung kailan siya nagawa, sinong gumawa sa kanya, sinong bumuo sa kanya, and then we uh, analyze uh, this constitution by the elements of the state which are the territory, sovereignty, citizens, and government. Okay. So, na-discuss na natin to kanina. Ang territory is the occupation of a fixed territory by the state. No? Land, water, air, space within the defined territorial area comprise the territory of the state. It embraces the geographical limits of the state, its rivers and lakes, the natural resources, and the airspace above. So kung makita nyo yung um, map sa side, yan yung naka-outline dyan ang territory ng Philippines kasama ang kanyang exclusive economic zone. No? Ayan. So, very clear kung kung saan tayo nakatira. That is where we live. No? On It's a fixed point on the earth. Yan yung territory. Citizens, tayo yon, Ikaw yon, At ako. It is the people who make the state. Without them, there can be none. But the population must be large enough to make a state and sustain it. 
Government, it's the agency created to enforce rules of conduct and to ensure obedience is called government. No? Sovereignty, ito, hindi ito makikita, pero makikita ang manifestation dito. You cannot physically see sovereignty, but the manifestation of it can be seen. A state must be internally supreme and free from external control. The state must have monopoly of authority inside its boundaries. Each state is independent of the other states. Its will is its own, unaffected by the will of any other external state. Sir, are there any exception to that rule that sovereignty is absolute? No? That the state has full control over internal affairs that they cannot be uh, interfered upon by other states na hindi sila pwedeng pakialaman ng ibang bansa is that absolute no meron ng mga ano diyan exemptions pero very very rarely used yung tinatawag nilang long arm doctrine long arm doctrine para mas madali nating each i-digest um, ang long arm doctrine e eh, allusion gamitan natin ng uh, parang comparison or parang ano illustration yung um, for example eh, no ikaw ay mayroong bahay tapos um syempre nakapader yung bahay mo and wala kang you have no control over dun sa affairs ng kabilang bahay di ba ganun yon hindi ka pwedeng makialam sa kapitbahay no di ba ganun yon um, you do not have um, the right to interfere into the privacy of other people's home and other people's house. And you cannot uh, dip your finger into other people's affairs. Ganon yon, hindi ba? So ang exception dun is for humanitarian reason. Like for example, mayroong violation ng human rights sa katabing bahay. You are actually encouraged if not obliged to call the police. So that's interference, right? Or that's pakikialam, right? Sa mga internal affairs ng kapitbahay. Pero, yan, you can do it for humanitarian and other human rights reason. No? You can do it. You can actually do it. You can go to their home and then stop the violence. Kausapin mo, itigilan nyo yan. No, that's you are violating human rights. No, yung ganun. So, so when you hear uh, mga ya yeah, cries, cries for help, syempre you, ha, you are obliged to help. No? So yun yung, kung palakihin natin ng konti, gawin natin republic level, Philippine national level, ano yun, long arm doctrine. So that's uh, the sovereignty as an element of the state. No? So as a review, Territory, sovereignty, government, and then citizens. So, isa-isahin natin yung pito. Let's begin with an 1897 constitution. So, ang constitution na ito ay binuo ng ating mga leaders nung constit sa biyak na bato sa Bulacan, no, sa San Miguel, Bulacan. So, Nagkota doon ang mga katipunero sa ilalim ng pamumuno ni Emilio Aguinaldo. And then may mga matatil, matatalinong members, they sat down and then they drafted a constitution that will be the basis for governance. No? Kaya ang pinakauna-unang republic sa Philippines ay ang tinatawag na Biyak na Bato Republic. And the first president of the Biyak na Bato Republic is none other than General Emilio Aguinaldo. No? Okay, so it was written by Felix Ferrer and Isabelo Artacho, who benchmarked it from the Cuban Constitution of Himaguayu noong 1895. No? So at least nakakuha sila ng kopya ng Constitution ng Cuba. No? And then, Himaguayo, no? yung sa Constitution ng Himaguayo, 1895. No? So, ang preamble, 
Uh, I will read them to you kasi klaro dito, mahalaga itong preamble na ito kasi dito yung naging declaration natin na we are parting ways from the Spanish monarchy. No? So, uh, the separation of the Philippines from the Spanish monarchy and their formation into an independent state with its own government called the Philippine Republic has been the end sought by the revolution in the existing war began on the 24th of August, 1896, and therefore, in its name and by the power delegated by the Filipino people, interpreting faithfully their desires and ambitions, we, the representative of the revolution, in a meeting at Biak Nabato, November 1, 1897, unanimously adopted the following articles for the constitution of the state. No, so what is important in the Biak Nabato Republic constitution is that we declared in its preamble now we are separating from the Spanish monarchy. That the purpose of the Philippine Revolution is actually to separate the Philippines from the Spanish monarchy. Ayan. So this declaration is clear that the Philippines is an independent state. Yun yung kopya ng Constitución Politica de la República Filipina promulgada el día 22 de enero 1899. It is yun official. No? And this is the convention that took place, the Malolos Convention. No? of 1899 sa Baraswain Church no? for those um, who are not from Bulacan uh, ako tulad sa akin taga Mindanao ako eh, taga Butuan City no? uh, pangarap kong mapuntahan yan yung Baraswain Church na yan at napuntahan ko na ngayon kasi dito na ako sa Baliwag Bulacan nag work no? so napupuntahan ko na siya every now and then it's a beautiful church and uh, historic no you can smell the historicity of that church inside. President Emilio Aguinaldo convoked a revolutionary congress at Baraswain Church in Malolos, Bulacan. No? And then, the congress was held on September 15, 1898. No? Kaya dito sa Bulacan, kapag uh, September 15, every year, holiday, Kasi ang tawag dito sa Bulacan, Fiesta Republica. No, yun yung uh, parang anniversary ng Malolos Republic. No, in the afternoon, they elected officers which was won by Pedro A. Paterno, the Congress President. No? Originally, the Congress was convoked to advise President Aguinaldo, but the Congress proposed the drafting of a constitution. No, para kay Emilio Aguinaldo, hindi na kailangan magkaroon ng drafting of the constitution kasi natandaan nyo, ilang wala pang dalawang taon, meron nagpagawa na siya ng constitution sa Biak na Bato ano, kanina. So hindi sabi, sabi niya, hindi ko kailangan na magkaroon tayo ng constitution kasi nakaano na yun, nakasulat na doon sa constitution ng Biak na Bato kung ano ang sa loobin ng mga tao on how I will govern them. No, how the government will govern them nakapaloob na doon. No? But uh, we will have a congress at Baraswa in Church in Malolos for you to advise me kasi itong si si Emilio Aguinaldo nahirapan din kasi mayor lang kasi siya eh sa Kawit Cavite, no? Uh, Gobernador Silio lang siya eh tapos ngayon president na lang siya ng Philippines. So medyo nahirapan siya, so nag-create nag siya ng Congress for, for the Congress to give him some advice on how to manage the new republic. Pero ang president ng Congress na si, si Pedro A. Paterno ay uh, nag-propose na, o sige gumawa na tayo ng bagong constitution. Ayan, no? The, the very active Pedro Paterno. <laughs> Itong Pedro Paterno na to, active yan na bayani, no, si Pedro Paterno. I remembered na 
nung uh, lumaya na tayo sa sa mga Espanyol, eh gusto ni Pedro Paterno na pagkasunduin pa tayo with the Spaniards. So nagkaroon ng Pact of Biak na Bato. Siya yung nagbroker nun. Yung kasunduan sa Biak na Bato. Siya nagbroker nun. Si Pedro Paterno. Sumuko tuloy si Aguinaldo sa sa mga Espanyol kasi balik na ang uh, tapos na ang revolusyon kasi nagkasundo na ang 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 Espanyol at saka Pilipino. Originally, the Congress was convoked as I said to advise President Aguinaldo but eventually it ended up drafting another constitution very familiar, very famous Malolos Republic Constitution. So, Apolinario Mabini, yung advisor talaga ni Emilio Aguinaldo, he opposed the proposal of a drafting of a constitution. Sabi niya, hindi pa tayo nagka... Wala pang peace and order ang Philippines kasi continuing pa yung gyera nito eh. Nagkakagira-gira pa, no? In fact, hindi pa buo ang Philippines noon. Uh, may mga parts pa na sakop pa ng Ispan Espanyol. May mga parts na lumaya na. No? Ayan. So, Apolinario Mabini uh, opposed the drafting of a constitution citing peace and order, condition of the country. However, he submitted his constitutional plan for the Republic of the Philippines. So, meron din siyang na-draft na din itong si Apolinario Mabini. No? Kasi he might be sitting in a hammock, naka ano lang to sa duyan eh nakasakay lang sa duyan nitong si Apolinario Mabini but he has a very very powerful brain so the constitution of uh, Malolos Republic to continue a committee was created tasked to draft a constitution it was led by Felipe G. Calderon Calderon set aside the draft presented by Mabini and Paterno and with the advice of Cayetano Arellano Calderon drew his own draft. The Malolos Constitution was benchmarked from the constitutions of Mexico, Belgium, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil, and France. Calderon was poised to make Catholicism a state religion. After a heated discussion, the Congress voted on it. The result was a tie. There was a tie. No? But it was defeated on the second vote by just one vote. The state therefore recognizes the separation of church and state. So ito si Pablo Texon. Siya yung one vote that broke the tie. And then ito si Felipe G. Calderon. Siya yung chair ng nagbuo ng uh, Malolos uh, Constitution. So on October 8, 1898, Calderon presented the draft of the Constitution. And then a few days after, October 21, printed copies of the said drafts were made. The liberation started on October 25, 1898. So many months after, President Aguinaldo promulgated the Malolos Constitution. He signed it on January 21. 1899. So, titignan natin ang Malolos Constitution in terms of the elements of the state, territory, for example. The, although the phrase Philippine ter territory was mentioned many times in the Malolos Constitution, there was no exact definition. So, there was no delineation to the Philippine territory. Walang nakadelineate, no? Kasi kung magulo pa nga eh, sabi nga ni Apolio, Apolinario Mabini, it's not the right time to draft a constitution kasi we have not liberated the whole Philippines yet from the Spanish rule. We only liberated a few provinces but all the rest still are under the Spanish rule. So kaya tuloy ang territory na mention lang sa Malolos Constitution but wala naman siyang exact delineation what constitutes the Philippine territory wala, no, wala siya. So, absent na kagad ang isang element. Government. According to the Malolos Constitution, the government, uh, 
the government of the republic is popular, representative, alternative, and responsible, and shall be divided among three distinct powers, which shall be named legislative, executive, and judicial. So, meron ng lawmaking body, legislative, meron ng uh, president, executive, and meron ng justice department, the one that resolves issues and conflicts against the uh, in the state, the judicial department. So, yung three branches ng government na existing ngayon sa Philippines ay meron na sa Malolos Constitution. And then, ang nakalagay, republic siya, which means democratic, and then popular, Tsaka representative, ibig sabihin may mga congressman siya. This is not a direct democracy. Uh, it's governed by representatives. No? So to continue, uh, as to the citizens, we ask the question, who are the citizens of the Philippines according to the Malolos Constitution of 1899? The answer can be found in, in Title IV. No? on the Filipinos and their national and individual rights. Article 6, the following are Filipinos, all persons born in the Philippine territory. So any sea vessel where the Philippine flag is flown is considered for this purpose a part of Philippine territory. So it, it, does, not, it does not delineate the uh, whether you're American, whether you're a Spaniard, whether you're a Mexican, no? as long as you're born in the Philippines, you're a Filipino. Kasi all persons born in the Philippine territory. Eh. No? So kung pinanganak ka sa Philippines, regardless kung sino ang parents mo, regardless kung ano ang lahi ng parents mo, you're a Filipino according to the Malolos Constitution. So lahat ng mga vessels, sea vessels, na pagmamayari or registered sa Philippines, pag pinanganak ka doon sa ship or sea vessel na nakapangalan, registered, or pagmamayari ng Filipino or may flag na Philippines, you are a Filipino. Kasi those sea vessels are considered part of the Philippine territory. No? Children, number two, children of Filipino father or mother, even though they were born outside the Philippines. So, all persons, regardless of parents, born inside the Philippines. Pero kung born outside ka the Philippines, you should have a Filipino father or mother at least. Nakalagay or. So, isa lang sa magulang mo Filipino, Filipino ka na din. No? Ipinanganak ka man sa loob o labas ng Pilipinas. Basta isa sa mga magulang mo, Filipino, Filipino ka din. Under sa Malolos Constitution. So foreigners who have obtained certificate of naturalization. Number four, those who without such certificate have acquired domicile in any town within the Philippine territory. So kung ikaw ay foreigner, nakabili ka ng, naka, nakakuha ka ng bahay or dito ka na naninirahan sa any town within the Philippine territory, you are a Filipino. So yung Malolos Constitution is very liberal, very inclusive, very welcoming. Kasi kahit Espanyol ka, kung sa, Pilipino ka, sa Pilipinas ka pinanganak, you are a Filipino. No? Here. No? Kahit Amerikano ka, kung nakakuha ka ng tahanan, nakatira ka sa isa sa mga bayan sa Pilipinas, you are a Filipino, te Filipino citizen. No? So, may, meron tayong citizens noon. So, review, territory, hindi clear, government, uh, three branches, nandun na. And then, citizens, merong definition ng Filipinos dito. So, sa... No? Sovereignty. Ayan. Gaano kalaya ang Philippines ng Malolos Constitution? So, yan. Title 1 on the Republic. Article 1. The political association of all Filipinos constitute a nation whose state shall be named as the Philippine Republic. So, hindi tayo Republic of the Philippines noon, ha? Philippine Republic. 
and then the Philippine Republic is free and independent, and then sovereignty resides exclusively in the people. So sovereignty is also mentioned and defined in Malolos Constitution. So the four elements, territory, government, sovereignty, citizens. Do you consider the Malolos Republic as a state? Our next constitution that we will be talking about is the 1935 constitution. No? So ang context is, nung July 1901, uh, the Americans formally established the first civil government in the islands. No? So yung mga Amerikano, after nilang mabili ang Philippines sa Treaty of Paris, under sa Treaty of Paris, they started to establish the Philippine, the civil government. No? Yung nagkaroon na ng mga gobyerno, nag, nagtayo na sila ng mga local government units. No? Simula 19, um, nagpa-election na sila. No? Nagpa-election na sila. No? In fact, dito sa Baliwag, uh, lagi proud na proud sila na sinasabi na ang unang eleksyon ng mga Amerikano sa buong Pilipinas ay nangyari sa Baliwag. No? Nagpa-election na ang mga Amerikano. No? Ayan. Kaya uh, during the administration of Governor General Francis Burton Harrison, 1913 hanggang 1921, Filipinos were given a hand in running the country. So, yung mga ilustrado natin, nag-self-train na, nag-training na para maging uh, government officials. In 1916, the Philippine Autonomy Act, also known as the Jones Law of 1916, was passed resulting in an all filipino legislature ayan so from 1918 to 1932 there were at least five philippine independence missions to the united states yung efforts resulted in the passage of tidings mcdoffie law on march 24 1934 so Nagbunga din ang ating pabalik-balik sa Washington, sa United States, na hingiin ang ating kalayaan. Nagbunga din yon kasi mayroong naipasang tidings McDoffie Law noong March 24, 1934. Ito yung nagbigay ng 10-year period, 1935 to 1945, na Commonwealth period of the Philippines. Magte-training ang Philippines para magkaroon ng self independence ng self governance no uh, pagka after 10 year palalayain na siya ng Amerika so 1935 to 1945 na training period no a uh, commonwealth period so on July 10 1934 202 delegates were elected to write the constitution so para to, to prepare the Philippines for the Commonwealth period, we need to write the Constitution. The convention opened on July 30, and then the draft was finished by January 31, 1935. Kaya siya 1935 Constitution. So the Constitution was approved by U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on March 23, 1935. The Filipinos... No, ratified the Constitution on May 14, 1935. So itong si Tomas Kabile, tingnan niyo si Tomas Kabile. Sir, but but nandiyan si Tomas Kabile, no? Ah, uh, siya lang kasi sa 202 delegates sa na na elected para sumulat sa Constitution. Si Attorney Tomas Kabile lang ang hindi bumoto nung ito ay uh, ipasa na. He did not uh, vote. No, he is from Lanao, from Iligan, Lanao del Norte. Hindi siya nag-vote kasi ang kadahilanan niya, hindi daw ito uh, nag-reflect or nag-represent. Ang constitution na ito ay hindi niya na-reflect ang saloobin ng mga taga Mindanao, ng mga taga Lanao. No? It did not reflect the the sentiments of my people, no? Kilalang kilala ito si Tomas Kabili. May Kabili Street sa Iligan ngayon, sa Lanao del Norte. 
So yung 1935 Constitution, yan ang mga letrato. Makikita dito sa kaliwa ng aking screen ang pumipirmang Pangulo ng United States ng Amerika sa panahon yon na si Franklin D. Roosevelt. At sa tabi niya, ito, ito ang napakapogi nating si Pangulong Manuel Quezon. No? Ayan. At ito naman sa kabila ang letrato ng deliberation ng 1935 Philippine Constitution. Iti-check na natin ngayon ang 1935 Constitution vis-a-vis -vis the four elements of the state. And we begin with the national territory. Was it defined there? No, so, section one of the concept of national territory in the 1935 Constitution is the Philippines comprises all the territories ceded to the United States by the Treaty of Paris, concluded between the United States and Spain on the 10th day of December, 1898, the limits of which are set forth in Article 3 of the said treaty, together with all the islands embraced in the treaty, concluded at Washington between the United States and Spain on the 7th day of November, 1900, and in the treaty concluded between the United States and Great Britain on the 2nd day of January, 1930, and all territory over which the present government of the Philippines exercises jurisdiction. So, maliwanag sa 1935 Constitution ang territory of the Philippines. So, ano-ano ang teritoryo ng Pilipinas? According to the 1935 Constitution, ay ang, na, ang mga teritoryo ng Pilipinas ay yung ibinigay sa Amerika sa Treaty of Paris. No? December 10, 1898. Another is yung binigay sa Amerika sa Treaty ng Washington. No? Ayan. Same, same uh, parties, United States and, and Spain. November 7, 1900. At saka yung binigay sa Amerika na, na under sa Treaty ng United States at Great Britain noong January 19, 1930. No, tingnan natin yan. Nandito yan. So yung treaty between the Kingdom of Spain and the United States of America noong November 7, 1900, yung islands ng Cagayan, Sulu, and Cebuto isinama na doon sa Philippine territory na pinagsinid ng Treaty of Paris. No? And then yung sa United States and Great Britain, it refers to the Turtle Islands and Mang Sea Islands. No? So, lumaki ng konti pa ang Philippines noong 1930 kasi nadagdagan tayo ng Turtle Islands at Mang Sea Islands. No? Maraming turtle sa Turtle Islands. Sigurado yan. Kaya nga tinawag na Turtle Islands yan. The Commonwealth and the Republic, uh, ito yung government. The government established by this constitution shall be known as the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Upon the final and complete withdrawal of the sovereignty of the Philippines and the proclamation of the Philippine independence, the Commonwealth of the Philippines shall thenceforth be known as the Republic of the Philippines. So, kanina, Philippine Republic. Ngayon, dito, Commonwealth of the Philippines na magiging Republic of the Philippines after 1945. So, my government. So more on the government, the executive power, according to the 1935 Constitution, shall be vested in the President of the Philippines. The legislative power shall be vested in a National Assembly. No? The, the members of the National Assembly shall not exceed 120, shall be chosen every three years, and shall be apportioned among several provinces as may be according to the number of the respective inhabitants, but each province shall have at least one member. And then the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as may be established by law. Citizenship, 
The following are the citizens of the Philippines under the 1935 Constitution. Number one, those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of this Constitution. Number two, those born in the Philippines of foreign parents who, before the adoption of this Constitution, had been elected to public office in the Philippine Islands. Number three, those whose fathers are citizens of the Philippines and those whose mothers are citizens of the Philippines and upon reaching the age of majority, elect Philippine citizenship. And those who are naturalized in accordance with the law. Pwede ding hingiin ang citizenship through naturalization. So kanina, we discussed uh, the 1935 Constitution and then we say na meron siyang territory, meron siyang government, meron siyang uh, sovereignty, and then meron siyang um, citizens. And we even enumerated the citizens. So sa 1935 Constitution, maayos ang pagkadelineate ng territory at uh, lumaki pa ang Philippines natin with the inclusion of the Sulu uh, the, the islands of Cagayan, Cebuto, and Sulu, and the uh, inclusion of Mangsi and the Turtle Islands. No? Until 1930, nag acquire tayo ng bagong territories. No? So yon. let us now proceed to the Constitution of 1943, pero hindi natin ito i-discuss kasi wala ito sa ating focus para lang mayroong historical connection, uh, ano, uh, linear continuity, uh, atin lang siyang uh, banggitin pero hindi natin siya i-dissect. No? So, sa Constitution of the Second Philippine Republic. So, uh, the kapisanan ng paglilingkod sa bagong Pilipinas, Kaliba P, ito yung uh, association ng mga Filipinos serving the Philippines nung panahon ng mga Hapon. No? Convened and elected the a Philippine Commission for Philippine Independence, PCPI, to write a new constitution which was finished on September 4, 1943. So, during that time, nagkaroon tayo ng constitution of 1943. It was called the Second Philippine Republic. No, sa mga panahon to ng mga Hapon, tingnan nyo may, may, may flag pa ng Hapon. No, ayan. No? So, yun, nagkaroon tayo ng, ang mga hapon kasi gustong, gusto tayong bigyan ng semblance of normalcy. Kahit gera siya, gusto ng mga hapon na feeling natin normal ang buhay. So, nag-ano sila, nag-encourage sila sa atin na magbuo ng constitution. So, let us now proceed to another focus, the 1973 Constitution. So this is under the, the presidency of President Ferdinand E. Marcos. No, he envisions the new constitution to meet the myriad of challenges faced by the Philippines since the, its independence in 1946. So remember na wala pa tayo talagang constitution na maayos no ng na ang Pilipinas kasi ang constitution natin lahat may bahid ng ng kolonyalismo like for example yung time ng 1973 na pinabuo ni Marcos ang constitution ang existing constitution during the time is yung 1935 constitution hindi pa free ang Philippines noon sa sa constitution na ganun no, so, pinabago, pinarevise ni President Ferdinand E. Marcos ang, ang 1935 Constitution, ginawa niya, nagkaroon siya ng 1973 Constitution. So, a constitutional convention was convened at the Manila Hotel, June 1, 1971. And despite the declaration of martial law, the convention pushed through which was finished and the draft approved on November 30, 1972. The draft was submitted to citizens' assemblies, which were formed 
to approve or reject the constitution. No, so ito unique na unique ito kasi hindi tayo nagkaroon ng ng referendum ng plebiscite, no? Hindi hindi kinonsulta ang mga tao in a plebiscite form. Kinonsulta tayo in citizens assemblies, yung mga barangay assemblies. So, uh, they were it, it was said na the citizens assemblies approved the 1973 or ratified the 1973 constitution. So on January 17, 1973, President Ferdinand E. Marcos signed the Proclamation 1102 declaring the ratification of the 1973 Constitution. It provides for a parliamentary form of government. The legislative power, at least my legislative power, is na lang, hindi na divided into Senate and House of Congress, hindi na kundi isa na lang, batasang pambansa. No? And then, constitutional conv commissions include, nag naglagay ng constitutional commission. Wala ito sa kabila, sa ibang mga constitution. Yung civil service commission, COMELEC, and then commission on audit. No? So at least may mga independent constitutional bodies no? na na-create ang 1973 constitution. No, ito yung uh, sa may kanang baha, sa may right uh, left side ko ay ang um, deliberation ng 1973 constitution sa right side ko naman si pangulong Ferdinand E Marcos nag address sa mga taong bayan so himay-himayin natin ang 1973 constitution in terms of the elements of the state first element territory no so, territory can be found in Article 1, the National Territory, 1973 Constitution. Section 1, the National Territory comprises the Philippine Archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all the other territories belonging to the Philippines by historic title or right, right or legal title including the territorial sea, the airspace, the subsoil, the seabed, the insular shelves, and other submarine areas over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction. The waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago, irrespective of their breadth and dimensions, form part of the internal water of the Philippines. So kung makikita nyo yung map, yan yung na-delineated no? ng Philippine territory, no? yung sea boundary natin. And then all the waters inside that map are called internal waters, regardless of breadth and depth. No? Ayan, ang ganda, no? ang ganda na ang ating territory ay... Hindi body of land surrounded by water. Hindi. It's a body of water sprinkled with land. No? Kasi lahat ng bodies of water natin, part talaga siya ng Philippine territory. So Philippine territory is technically a body of water is sprinkled with lands. Hindi, hindi body of, hindi lands surrounded by water. Hindi. It's a body of water sprinkled with lands, with islands. So the best territorial definition of Philippine territory is in the 1973 Constitution. Let's now go to the government. The government, according to Article 2, Section 1 of the 1973 Constitution, the Philippines is a Republican state. It's a democratic state, kumbaga, kung Republican. Sovereignty resides in the people and all governmental authority emanates from them. The president shall be the head of state and the chief executive of the Republic of the Philippines. The legislative power shall be vested in batasang pambansa. No, kung napapansin niyo, class, um, mga Tagalog na yung ginagamit na salita, no? Uh, sa ligang batas, batasang pambansa, yung mga offices ay tinatawag na ng mga kagawaran o tanggapan, ganyan. No? 
Kasi gusto ni President Ferdinand Marcos na i-Filipinize na lahat. Wala na dapat bahid ng pananakop ang ating konstitusyon. No? Ayan. So the Batasang Pambansa shall be composed of not more than 200 members. And then the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as may be established by law. So nandito din lahat, no? It's a democratic state, Republican. No? Ang ibig sabihin may representatives, may mga congressmen. No? Uh, ang mga tao hindi pwedeng directly magmanage sa state. Magmamanage tayo sa state through our representatives. No? And then, nandun ang executive headed by the president. Nandun ang legislative headed by uh, the Speaker of the House. Nandun ang judicial power headed by the Supreme Court Justice. Na? So, kompleto ang ating government. Ne. And then, mayroon bang mga citizens sa uh, 1973 Constitution? The following are the citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of this Constitution. In other words, yung mga citizens ng 1935 Constitution automatic na din citizen ng 1973 Constitution by virtue of Section 1, Paragraph 1, Article 3. Itong those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of this Constitution. Those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines. So kanina, fathers lang. Those whose fathers are citizens of the Philippines. And then those whose mothers are citizens of the Philippines, kailangan mag-vote kung gusto nilang maging uh, citizen of the Philippines by the time they reach 18. Pero here, pwede na mothers and fathers, equal na. So kung anybody in the family, in the mother or the father, anybody who is a Filipino citizen by mother or by father shall be citizens of the Philippines as well. No? Those who elect Philippine citizenship pursuant to the provisions of the Constitution of 1935, ayun, yung my mother siya na, na Filipino citizen and then he, he opted to elect Philippine citizenship. No? Ayan. So, and finally, those who are naturalized in accordance with law. Checking on element number four, sa state, the Philippines is a, a sovereignty tayo. Sovereignty in 1973 constitution resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. So there is a, an idea of sovereignty here in the 1973 constitution. Article 2, section 3 states that the Philippine renounces war as an instrument of national policy, adopts the generally accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land and adheres to the policy of peace, equality, justice, freedom, cooperation, and amity with all nations. So it gives us a sense that we are at par or equal with any other nation. No? Kasi sovereign nation nga tayo. And then, Prohibition or limitations of foreign ownership in the operation of a public utility, exploration, development of exploitation or utilization of any natural resources and educational institutions. So, yun yung katapusan ng 1973 Constitution. So, evaluating 1973 Constitution by territory, state, sovereignty, citizen, I think all the elements of the state are present in the 1973 Constitution. And therefore, the Philippines is a state no? during that time. We are free. 1935, we are not. Kasi, we are not a state. Kasi there is no sovereignty. No? Sovereignty is at a later date, 1946. The Constitution of 1986. So yung context... After 1986 ends a People Power Revolution held on February 22 to 25, 1986, 
one of the first acts of the new administration is to adopt a provisional constitution. Pag sinabing provisional constitution, uh, temporary. Kasi ayaw na nila yung 1973 constitution kasi nga masama ang naging karanasan natin sa sa uh, martial law eh. at saka it led to to the unforgettable and sa revolution. Kaya nung 1986 talagang isinantabi natin ang 1973 constitution. We don't want to take part of it. So ang ginawa ng president, si Pangulong Corazon, ko Juan ko Aquino, noong 1986, eh talagang sinet aside niya yun at uh, naggumawa siya ng temporary or provisional constitution. Now, the provisional constitution, gayon lang naman din, same lang naman din, adopted the 1973 constitution, especially the provisions on Bill of Rights. Under the constitution, the president has the power to appoint members of the Constitutional Commission. Ayan si Pangulong uh, Corazon, Kuwangko Aquino, at ang kanyang 1986 uh, Freedom Constitution, Provisional Constitution. So punta tayo sa yung provisional constitution, temporary lang yon kasi ginagawa pa yung 1987 constitution. Ginagawa pa. So ito na yung 1987 constitution, gawa na by 1987. So ang context niya is, on May 26, 1986, President Corazon C. Aquino appointed 50 constitutional commission members representing various sectors of the society. No? On June 2, 1986, CONCO members led by Justice Cecilia Munoz Palma started their sessions at Batasang Pambansa. No? Oh, mas tipid itong si Pangulong Corazon, Uwangko Aquino. Kasi kanina si Pangulong Marcos, eh, ang Constitutional Convention Sessions ay ginawa sa Manila Hotel. Ito namang si... President Corazon Aquino sa batasang pambansa lang, medyo tipid. No? By October 12, 1986, they were done with their tasks. And the draft were pre was presented to the President on October 15, 1986. So on October 2, 1987, a plebiscite was conducted to ratify the Constitution. And uh, the Filipinos ratified it. So let us now uh, look at the, the photographs. Ito si Justice Cecilia Munoz Palma. Uh, inabot na niya kay Pangulong Aquino ang, nation, ang 1987 Constitution. At yan naman ang letrato ni Pangulong Cory Aquino na kilala sa kanyang kulay na dilaw. She is the yellow lady. So let us now check the 1987 Constitution. In terms of the elements of the state, national territory. The national territory comprises the Philippine archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction consisting of terrestrial fluvial aerial domains including its territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, the insular shelves, and other submarine areas. The waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago, regardless of their breadth and dimensions, form part of the internal waters of the Philippines. So, claro ang ating territory, para lang siyang ginaya sa 1973 constitution, no? Uh, comprises the Philippine archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all other territories which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction. It might be land, water, air, or submarine areas. It doesn't matter. What belongs to the Philippines belongs to the Philippines. So meron tayong element number one, which is territory. So sa government naman, the Philippines is a democratic and republican state. 
Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. So democratic tayo sa 1987 constitution. The power shall be vested in, the executive power shall be vested in the president of the Philippines. The legislative power shall be vested in the Congress of the Philippines, which shall consist of a Senate, a House of Representatives, except to the extent reserved to the people by the provision on initiative and referendum. So yung paggawa ng batas ay nasa Congress ng Philippines, ating mga representative, kaya nga Republican, kasi representative democracy lang siya. And then may exception na pwede ang, tere, ang tao na mismo diretso ng makialam, yung provision ng initiative at saka referendum. And then finally, yung the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court in, and in such lower courts as may be established by law. So kung may mga issues, tanong, ang judge ay ang korte. No, sa so nandun pa rin ang three branches of the government, executive, legislative, and judicial. So kompleto tayo sa 1987 Constitution. Paano naman ang citizens ng 1987 Constitution? The following are the citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of the Constitution. Those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines. Those born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elected the Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. Those who are naturalized in accordance with the law. So, pupuntahan na natin ang fourth element of the state, the sovereignty. How free is the Philippines as a state noong 1987? So, we can see the constitution. Article 2, Section 7, the state shall pursue an independent foreign policy in its relations with other states. The paramount consideration shall be national sovereignty, territorial integrity, national interest and the right to self-determination so in dealing with foreign countries like china we should put forward territorial integrity kaya di ko maintindihan kung bakit parang halos ipinamimigay natin ang ating west philippine sea sa china no? when in the first place yung 1987 constitution maliwanag na we are free we are sovereign and once we do uh we we um we conduct our foreign policy, we pursue our foreign policy, we should consider with paramount consideration territorial integrity. So also to free the Philippines from foreign interference and intervention, especially during election, financial contributions from foreign governments and their agencies to political parties, organizations, coalitions, or candidates related to elections constitute interference in national affairs and when accepted shall be an additional ground for the cancellation of their respective registration with the commission and on election in addition to other penalties that may be prescribed by law so we don't accept no? and we prohibit our politicians including the parties where they belong to not to accept, no? we prohibit them in accepting financial considerations from foreign governments or any agency at that. No? Kasi pag ginalaw natin na may mga mag sponsor na mga politiko during election, masisira ang Philippines, no? ang ating ano. So furthermore, Article 12, Section 10, in the grant of rights, privileges, and concessions, Covering national economy and patrimony, the state shall give preference to, to qualified Filipinos. No, so, ayan, totoo yan. No, uh, privileges should be granted first to the Filipinos, no? kung kayang-kaya na nila. Kasi, Filipinos tayo eh. Why would they, well, why would we grant... Um, rights, privileges, and concessions to other companies or to companies of other countries. Unahin muna ang Filipinos. 
the state shall regulate and exercise authority over foreign investments within its national jurisdiction and in accordance with the national goals and priorities. No? I am. So after the expiration of the 1991 of in 1991 of the agreement between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America concerning military bases, foreign military bases, no? Troops or facilities shall not be allowed in the Philippines except under treaty duly concurred in by the Senate and when the Congress so requires. Rita, uh, ratified by a majority of votes cast by the people in a national referendum held for that purpose and recognized as a treaty by other contracting parties. Ganun ka independent ang ating foreign policy. We don't care about the Americans and their foreign policy. Although, although many times we were called the brown Americans kasi we always follow the advocacy of the Americans in international conventions and conferences. Oh, thank you. So to summarize, we have seven constitutions all in all. And then each of these constitutions have elements of a state. Absent lang sa 1935 constitution ang sovereignty. Absent siya doon. Kaya hindi tayo state noong 1935. Pero all others, we are a state. And we are free. Free as a nation. Okay, so I want you to take good care of yourself and treat, love yourself, treat yourself like you treat your best friend. Okay, we'll see each other soon. So see you guys. Bye-bye.